All right, y'all, we'll go ahead and get started. I think the majority of the folks who are in line have either found their way into the building or are close anyway. We're streaming this uh, in the lobby and also in the HR room, so there should be uh, an opportunity for everybody that made it out today to, to uh, participate in this. What a great crowd. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming out and uh, participating in the process and, and being part of this. Um, we're here today uh, to have a town hall to discuss the proposed uh, still fire facility in our downtown. Um, as Andrea Worthy will discuss here in a little bit, uh, still fire approached the city about eight months ago about building at this location. Uh, the council met and, and agreed to, to pursue the idea further. One of the things that I learned going door to door, uh, over 3,000 doors during the campaign, and I know that a lot of my colleagues also learned as they went door to door is that there's a strong desire uh, in this community for more activity and more energy in our downtown. And when this elected body met earlier this year to talk about strategic goals, economic development was at the top of the list. As you'll hear today, we're not bringing forward an industrial beer factory or even a bar, but rather a family friendly gathering space for all ages to enjoy as well as a new park. Today, we'll hear from our Economic Development Director, Andrea Worthy. We have Aaron Bizjus here, who's one of the owners of Still Fire and, and maybe our newest City of Smyrna, City of Smyrna resident. Uh, he, he'll be here to present about what they're uh, hoping to do here in our city. Um, our City Attorney, Scott Cochran, is gonna talk about uh, the land sale versus leasing the property uh, and all of the progress that's been made there. And then I'll talk briefly about um, the recent work session, council work session, where we had representatives from Swanee here um, who attended and addressed many of the questions and concerns uh, that are on people's minds. They went through the same exercise when Still Fire came there to Swanee a couple of years ago. Um, I'm gonna ask everybody to please hold all of your questions and comments until the end of all of the presentations, uh, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Since this is a televised, uh, streamed, and recorded event, just like any council meeting, I'm gonna ask anybody who wishes to speak uh, to come up to one of the two mics after you've been recognized. Um, there's a lot of people here, obviously, and we had a hard stop time at 3.30. We're gonna extend that to 3.45 since we got a late start. But I've asked that you keep your questions and comments to a, a minute, uh, two at most, just to make sure that everybody who has something to say uh, is able to do that. And keep in mind, too, when this comes before council for a vote uh, in the upcoming months, uh, you'll have an opportunity there for, for public input as well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andrea Worthy, our Economic Development Director here in Smyrna, uh, for her presentation. Andrea? Thanks. Hey, everybody. I'm hoping they can hear me there that way okay because I'm gonna to get to face uh, you all because um, no offense mayor and council this is for the, the community it's a town hall meeting it's a little different than what we do uh, normally in our council meetings so first of all I'm Andrea Worthy I'm your new economic development director I've been here uh, since earlier this year um, but I see some familiar faces because I was here about 10 years ago um, I've been in economic development all my life um, site selection work working for utilities working for the city of Smyrna then the city of Sandy Springs and I'm now very happy to be back here in Smyrna so um, with that what as the mayor pointed out if I can look up on our screen here we're gonna talk today really about the impact of breweries in general uh, from an economic development perspective we're gonna talk about specifically uh, on downtowns what kind of impact they have we're gonna talk about specifically here in Smyrna uh, what type of impact Put, they could have. And then, as the uh, mayor pointed out, uh, Still Fire is going to come up and talk about their specific proposal, show you a conceptual design, um, and then we're going to get to talk about the proposed deal structure and give some Q&A. So first of all, from an economic development perspective, from someone who's been doing this 25 years, I can tell you all of my cohorts in this profession get fairly excited when a brewery or a craft brewery begins to look at their town, and that's for several reasons. Um, first of all, having a craft brewery somewhere in your community uh, is really an indication of the vitality of your town. So I'm happy that at least we're being considered. 
um, because that means that it's a place uh, that other places want to do business. And speaking of other places doing business, um, having a craft brewery presence, a third um, place, as they like to say, it's a little bit different than a restaurant or uh, another type of retail, really indicates to the development community that that's some place they want to invest and do business. So that's one of the reasons that I, as an economic development professional, are excited to be uh, presenting this in front of you today. Um, you know, and frankly, lifestyle amenities in general for economic development have gotten to be a bigger deal, um, even for large employers uh, who are looking to invest in a community, um, maybe wanting to build an office or some type of distribution facility, because their employees want to be located in a place that offers a lot of different type of lifestyle amenities. So let's see if we can go through the, some of these. Now, I put some renderings on the screen here. And again, this, is this uh, presentation will also be available online, because I realized over the past couple of months that not everybody has been to a craft brewery and not everybody knows what the concept is and is not. So I wanted to be able to give you some visuals of what that might look like. So not only are a breweries a, a positive for the community overall, they are specifically uh, over the past several years become much more important in downtown and downtown revitalizations. Um, they really add another layer of community experience um, like a local coffee shop, like a independently owned restaurant because they are an independent craft institution. They're not uh, owned by a corporate entity. Um, and it's a place where not only the locals want to go, but the visitors, when they come to town, they want to go where the locals go. Um, it, it really gives a sense of branding and a sense of place to a community. A, they serve as community centers where people connect and they create uh, vibrant neighborhoods. They add to a sense of place. And the one thing I'm most excited about is they increase foot traffic for the other businesses in the area. And speaking frankly to you, as your economic development director, our downtown needs additional visitors to the area to be successful. It's had a mixed bag of success since its incorporation or uh, since it was created 20 something years ago. And I think all of you that have been citizens here for long enough have seen some of the restaurants. Some of them have been very successful and some of them have struggled. Um, and I think part of that um, is related to we don't have enough visitor traffic to our downtown. The picture here that you can see sort of on the screen um, is Gate City uh, Brewery, which is in downtown Roswell off of Canton Street. It sits right next to all of its other restaurants and whatnot in downtown. Um, and if you can see the picture here, it's a, it's, you know, they're not, not tables, it's not a restaurant, you're not sitting down and taking up space, it's a gathering place. Um, and if you could see in there, there's a dog in the picture as well. That's an important from a brewery perspective. So again, they're positive for downtown revitalization. They are great for supporting local art and events. They offer, um, frankly, they are an event venue. They are the type of place where they're trying to hold events um, to bring business in, obviously. Um, and that's not something that restaurants can necessarily do. Um, and in conversations with my uh, other economic development officials in Cobb County and in Cherokee County, um, they're telling me that they've added an average of 1,000 to 2,000 new visitors to downtown every week. Um, and again, other businesses in downtown are benefiting from that foot traffic. This particular picture is a picture of Reformation Brewery, which is in downtown Woodstock. Um, actually, Reformation started out in an industrial area in 2013, and then they moved to downtown Woodstock in 2018 because downtowns benefit from breweries uh, and their um, foot traffic, but also the breweries benefit from the existing downtown traffic and the sense of place. People want to be in a, a place um, not necessarily a particular location when they're visiting these types of things. Um, let's see here. Maybe. Okay. Um, just the industry in general, because it's fairly new here in Georgia, or it's gotten bigger uh, in the past 10 to 15 years, and that's because of some changes in state law that allowed uh, breweries to operate a little differently. So they've become more popular in the past 10 years. Um, and in that time, Georgia's added over 100 new craft breweries, um, but it's still got a lot of room to grow because we're still 48th in the, um, per capita. Uh, so I think that's something you're going to see a lot more in the future. And the industry had a $2 billion economic impact here in Georgia alone in 2019. This particular picture is a brewery in downtown Kennesaw called Horned Owl Brewery. Um, you know, the Kennesaw Owls, I think is why they named it that thing. Um, and if you can see here in the picture, this is kind of the concept. You're sitting outside, uh, also inside. Um, it's an experience. It's a place. It's actually located uh, right next door to those are some residences in the background. Um, so it's right in the, the middle of their downtown. Kennesaw actually has several of these. This is just one I have a photo of. Um, in Cobb County, we talked about in, in Georgia. In Cobb County... 
uh, we had 12 craft beverage locations. Those are wineries, distilleries, or craft breweries um, in 2020. And this group to five, uh, five more. Uh, now we have 17 here. This is according to Cobb Travel and Tourism. And we have at least another three facilities planned in this county um, for next year. So by 2022, of the six cities in um, incorporated cities in Cobb County, four of those will have a brewery in their downtown, not including the one we're discussing today. Um, Ackworth, Kennesaw, Marietta, and Powder Springs will all have a brewery located in their downtown. Location, location, location is what this says. So we've talked a little bit about um, why they like to be in downtown, but craft breweries by definition are not large scale industrial producers. Do not think of a, a um, Sweetwater, that is an industrial producer. They are in an industrial site um, in downtown. If you have not been, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but uh, locally you should probably go visit the one in Marietta, Glover Park. Um, that's a, a one. Again, we've talked about a couple more up here that you could go see in Woodstock and Kennesaw. But those are the type of operations we're talking about. We're not talking about a large-scale production. And when Aaron gets up here, he'll address a couple more issues with how he runs his operation. Um, being located downtown, as we talked about, is pretty important for them because they benefit from being in a sense of place and the visitors that are already coming to downtown. And we benefit, we uh, as uh, the downtown would benefit uh, by having the extra visitation they bring. Uh, they're compatible in a mixed-use area. There's no odors. There's no emissions. Um, no noise. So speaking specifically about downtown Smyrna, the concept you see here in front of you is from the Smyrna Bowl Plan. This downtown was created more than 26 years ago, uh, and it was one of the first mixed-use developments in, um, in, the, in the Atlanta metro area. Uh, and it's wild to think, as an urban planner background, how, mu how many more of these things have, have come around. Everyone's wanted to redo their downtown, and Smyrna was the first one to do it. We were the cutting edge. That being said, there's been a lot of changes in the market in the past 26 years. Um, who would have thought even 10 years ago that Amazon would be having the impact on retail? Um, and frankly, if we were redesigning downtown today, if we wanted it to be successful, we would redesign it a little differently than it looks like. Um, Mixed-use developers now are adding more activity, more pedestrian activity. You know, speaking frankly, when we d designed our downtown, it was, it was very successful in terms of some of the public spaces uh, and buildings that were put into place. It was, it's not as successful from a commercial market perspective in making sure that the businesses downtown stay healthy. So. We've tweaked the plan over a couple of years. Um, you know, Jonquil's grown. Belmont's redeveloped during that time. That's completely changed the marketplace. The battery, that's something we, we do compete with on some level, um, has been built. So again, things are very different than they were 26 years ago. And in this bold plan that was put together, which by the way was put together before I got here, but I wholeheartedly agree with all the recommendations in it, um, it called for a couple of things. First of all, reactivating your public space, um, making it something that creates more activity, and you are in the process of doing that right now uh, with the new redesign of the uh, public green in downtown. The other thing it called for was adding public facilities like uh, additional parking, adding more pedestrian facilities so that people could, you know, it's more pedestrian friendly, um, and we're in the process of doing some of those things. And the third thing was to add commercial space and visitors to downtown. Um, and on this map that you see, the master plan that was adopted, the, some of the orange areas that were indicated on there is possible possible commercial space in the future, um, you know, include some, some empty parking lots, and actually a portion of it included the site. Um, so again, I think we've recognized in the past that this in, in the future could potentially be some type of commercial use. The site is a green lawn today. Um, frankly, it was intended in the original plan that it would be something else in the future. Um, that's one of the reasons you don't see park benches and things like that out there, because over time, we figured it would be something else. Now the what else, or what could it be, has, has not happened yet. Um, and that's one, this is one concept that we're bringing to you today to talk about. Um, let's see, what are we getting into now? Not moving. Heather, can you help me? It's not moving forward. It hates me. She's got the magic touch, I bet. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, we can go, I think we can actually move to the next one. 
So also the thing I realized the other day is I'm not sure everybody's clear on what the site is that we're talking about. So this is the site. Um, it, is, it is between Atlanta Road and the community center. The northern part of the site is the proposed brewery. Um, it's approximately 1.4 acres, um, and they are proposing to us that we sell approximately one of that acre, and the other 0.4 acres uh, would remain in the city's hands. And Scott's going to talk a little bit later about some of the reasons that we're looking at a sale versus a lease um, and s some of those things. But I just want to make sure everyone knows where that is. Even though we've been talking about it for eight months, I still have people ask me for what site we're talking about. Um, this is a map, actually, of the city downtown Swanee. So let me tell you how this deal came together. Um, I, like a lot of different businesses, people call and say, I'm looking for a site in Smyrna. I've got this type of business. Can you help me find a site? And my job is to send them to potential sites. Um, and Aaron called me from Stillfire and said, hey, I've got this brewery concept. Um, we're looking at this side of town. It's already something that's very successful in Swanee. And I sent him to uh, several sites around town that are available. I did not actually talk about this site. Um, and Aaron called me back and he said, hey, I went and looked at those sites with my broker. I still really like the Smyrna Marketplace. But I got to tell you, I don't think you know what it is I'm trying to do. Um, I'm looking for a site um, that is you know, closer to downtown. And he said, I think you ought to come out and look at my production in Swanee and see what I'm talking about. And so I did. I went out there, and then I, and it occurred to me, this is exactly the site. Um, and he asked about it. He said, would you all be willing to sell it? And I said, I have no idea. Uh, but that's when we went and spoke to council, and council said, it's an interesting enough prospect that we, you should move forward with that, and that's how we're getting here to, in front of you today. Um, that's how that deal came together. But ultimately, they were not uh, interested in other sites. They want to be in a downtown because that is where they are successful today in Swanee. So this particular map of Swanee, um, it's again very kind of difficult to see on the screen, but on the northern part they are between a police station and a municipal court building and they are adjacent to a city park and playground. Exactly the type of concept that they're pitching here today. Um, so again, I got very excited about this because they've done it. They've done it in a similar location to what they're proposing here, so I feel like they can be successful here. Um, I think this is my last slide. The other thing uh, about downtown, so right now, today in downtown, you can build a brewery in any mixed-use uh, district. Um, so there, it's, it's already zoned for the property, and in what they're proposing, they will uh, comply with our existing alcohol distance requirements. Um, they will be required to comply with our noise ordinances um, and all the other things. So they're not asking for variances from those items. Um, it is an event facility. It is not an industrial distribution site, which I agree with all of you. Um, well, not all of you, but some of you, that uh, an industrial space is not right for downtown. That's why this is not an industrial site. There are no odors of emissions. And again, from a sale of the property perspective, there are a couple of things. Um, and again, Scott will touch on some of these later. It's really a way to pl place additional controls on the property that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do with a lease. And then frankly, from uh, my perspective, what I get more excited about is if we sell this property, we actually get to tax this property. If it remains in the city or the DDA's hands, it is a, even if it is a lease, uh, we cannot collect property taxes on this property. And as much as excited I am to have visitors and whatnot come to downtown, I'd like the city to actually um, you know, collect some revenue from this as well. So this is a, an example here. They're planning on making a $7 million investment in Smyrna, um, 20 full-time employees and 60 part-time. Um, and again, as we talked about, I'm expecting increased visitation to downtown um, that will spend money at other places besides their location. Uh, in Marietta, um, at Glover Park, the economic development officials there tell me that uh, in addition to bringing 2,000 visitors a week to their downtown, they estimate 60 to 70 percent of those customers end up going out to eat somewhere else or going shopping somewhere else. So spending more of their money in, in Marietta. Um, and the mayor, I think, uh, addressed the uh, Swanee economic development officials for here the other day. They said when we were considering a relationship with Still Fire in our community, first of all, they were an untested product because they were, they were new. They didn't have this business elsewhere. It was their first location. And they, too, were very nervous, just like we are, about what might actually occur here in this community. And they said they have been overwhelmed with... Uh, how successful it has been in bringing visitors and, and not having an issue for their community. So that makes me feel good as well. Um, you can see some numbers there up on the screen. Estimated property tax, 
with the three taxing entities, uh, Smyrna, Cobb County, and the school board probably get about a hundred thousand dollars a year in property taxes, and then the Splost uh, sales taxes, the East Splost and the Cobb Splost would also receive additional sales tax numbers from sales of the brewery alone, not including any additional sales to other restaurants in the area. So, I think, Mayor, I'm getting to the point where we're going to let Still Fire come up, Aaron, and perhaps. Um, Another introduction, I would, I would encourage you all, if you have not gone on Still Fire's website, go to their website and you can actually click, there's the same videos on their website. You can click on their website and see, this is their concept in Swanee, and I'm going to play it, um, if, if that's okay. Yeah. I'm going to play the video here, because I think it really gives you, if you haven't been there, you don't really see how it operates. And this will give you a visual of kind of how it operates, how it sits next to a city park, et cetera. So, let's hope I can... Um, so you see here, this is the interior. This is, you know, where the kind of the hangout zone is. If you're looking straight there in the back, um, you're heading to their actual production facilities, which is where they're actually making the beer um, behind those doors. Um, it opens up to the outside. And what, what I want you to notice here as we come around is that is the city park right beyond those, down those stairs. That is literally the city park and the city playground that is next door to uh, their facility. And that's what they're proposing here. Did I get that? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll let uh, you drive now. Thank you guys for coming out today. Andrew, you want to turn off your microphone so that there's no feedback? Okay, thank you. My name is Aaron Biscus. I'm the general manager and partner at Stillfire Brewing. Um, I'm also your newest neighbor. Um, as Mayor Norton uh, commented, my girlfriend and I moved here to the downtown a few months ago. Um, plan to start a family here, and uh, we're your newest neighbors. So. Um, normally, I would bring some samples of beer for everybody, but uh, I would have needed a much bigger car today for the turnout. So. All right, um, who are we? Um, Still Fire. We, we started two years ago in Swanee, Georgia. Um, my partners and I, um, along with the Vuglers and my aunt and uncle, John and Lori Biscus, um, were looking for a place to call home. We wanted a place of community, a place to bring people together. Um, and, and my partners had actual, actually started the Swanee Beer Festival. I think it's been 11 years now. Um, it's grown into the largest beer festival in the state of Georgia. Um, they've had immense success. And so when we con got connected with them, the idea was, hey, why don't we start a brewery of our own? Um, their connections with the city of Swanee allowed us to identify a couple locations. Um, and we really wanted to be in the heart of downtown. Um, the goal there was to be pedestrian friendly, family friendly, in the heart of downtown where the activity was, and we felt like we could really bring an added benefit to the businesses and overall atmosphere that Swanee was lacking. Um, we've been open for two years now, despite shutdown from COVID, we've had immense success. Um, we've really achieved a lot of our goals um, in, in terms of creating a sense of community, um, a sense of social gathering, um, at Stillfire, we are about the community. We are a social gathering place. This is a place for families, friends, kids, elders, dogs, everybody to come and hang out. It is a light, vibrant atmosphere. It is open air. It is indoor, outdoor. It is parks. It is games. It is playgrounds. It is fire pits. It's live acoustic music, events. It truly is a place for everybody in the neighborhood and in the community to come and gather, meet up with long lost friends and neighbors and really enjoy each other's company. You don't have to drink to enjoy a brewery. We do food trucks, we have rotating uh, food vendors that come through. If you just wanna sit on a picnic table and enjoy, like you guys have at Food Truck Tuesdays down in downtown Smyrna, we have that ability. We don't cook food on site, we aren't a restaurant, we're not restaurant tours. We know what we're good at. We're good at making really good beer, and some of my brewers are here today, and we're actually the uh, most award-winning new brewery since we opened, o over 19, I think it's 19 medals, both in-state and nationally now. So I won't even talk too much about the beer, but it is really good, and I'll let you guys try it for yourselves. Um, I think what we're here to discuss is, you know, why this location, 
who we are and what we can really bring to downtown Smyrna. This is a concept rendering that we have distributed so far. I wanna preface that this is not a final rendering. None of this is final, but this is what we have put together with our architects and some of our team in the design. Um, remember that anything that we end up submitting for approval does have to go through approval process with the Urban Design Commission. Um, so we will be working hand in hand, hopefully with the city of Smyrna and coming up with something that looks and feels like something the community can really be proud of. Um, our goal is to invest $7 million into this project. It, it is not a light investment for us and that's one of the reasons that we are very adamant about owning the space. We hold ourselves to the highest level of excellence and standards and we want to be able to put something that we're proud of in this space. Um, in Swanee, we had an investment of about $2 million. We were very cost effective. We tried to make sure that while we wanted it to be vibrant and beautiful and a place we were happy about, that before we had proof of concept that we weren't gonna go under. So this one, now that we know that we can be successful, we're willing to back that up and really give it our all on this one. We wanna plant our flag here in downtown Smyrna. We want this to be an iconic place where people talk about it from all over Atlanta, not just in Smyrna. The traffic that we feel we will bring from not just Smyrna residents, but all the way around is gonna lift the, the tide for all businesses and restaurants and bars in this whole area. Um, on average, people stay for two, three hours. If you don't like the food truck options that we have there, you're welcome to grab a pizza or a bite from Atkins Park and bring it into the brewery. We don't care, We're not, you're not competing with our food. This is a place where we encourage everybody to be involved. Um, I've reached out to Andre at Porchlight about potential food truck con concept. I know how much everybody loves that place and it's sad to see it go. I would love to offer that to those guys and say, hey, let's have a permanent food truck that's always at still fire along with some other rotating ones. Th these are just some of the things that we do to try to partner with some of the local businesses and restaurants and really make it a community place. And that's the most important thing. I'm gonna keep stressing that we are community and that's what we wanna bring here. Um, we wanna bring a place for you and your family, your strollers, your dogs on a leash, please. Um, and come hang out at Stillfire. Yeah. Um, I would like to dispel a few rumors or misconceptions. Um, some of you have made the trip out to Swanee from here to come see us over the last couple of weeks, and we really do appreciate that. I encourage anybody that hasn't checked us out online, like Andrea said, to go check us out. You can see a live tour. You can actually click through and walk through our brewery and see the setup itself. Um, if you even better, come see us and really get a feel, especially on the weekends, the kind of atmosphere that we are trying to create there, because that's exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to become a destination. This is an experiential destination, on-premise, live events, live music, good times, good people. This is not a production industrial facility, and I can't stress that enough. While we do produce beer on site, that is the state law, that we have to produce the beer that we sell on site to be a brewery, that is not our primary business model. 95% of our sales are on-premise. 5% currently are distributed. The little box truck that you guys saw on a previous slide is the size box truck that comes once a week, if we're lucky, to come pick up some beer and take it to retailers through our distributor. The proposed brewery here is, a, is about double in size in terms of the floor plan. So you can do the math. Uh, the distribution capabilities there is not going to be a Sweetwater. It is not a Terrapin. This is not a place that we're looking to put the Duff Beer Factory from The Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> the floor plan here, if I can just run through it a little bit, you see the back of house, the, the brewery. That's where our equipment goes. Again, we have to have production equipment there because we have to make everything on site. Um, that's Georgia and state law. Um, the front of house, all those doors, um, the walls that you see on the outside are collapsible walls and doors on beautiful days, which we have nine months out of the year here in Georgia. Those things open up. It's all indoor, outdoor space. There's no hostess sitting you down in a dingy little uh, booth where you feel in separated from the rest of the community. We have big, long tables. We encourage you to stand up, go talk to your neighbors, go walk around, go pet each other's dogs, go outside, play some cornhole, sit by a fire pit. We've got a beer garden with fire pits, picnic tables, lots of outdoor space. That's the name of the game for us. Um, we don't want it to be dark. We don't want it to be secluded. This is about community, hanging out together, indoor, outdoor. We aren't a bar. 
We don't encourage people to get drunk. We endure, en encourage you to have a good time. We close at midnight in Swanee on Fridays and Saturdays and 10 o'clock on the weekdays. This is not a place to go get hammered till 2 a.m. This is not a place for 21-year-olds to go get hammered. Again, I'm saving my words here. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that's the atmosphere that we're creating. It is very family friendly. We have board games. Um, we do, <laughs> we have homemade craft root beer, non-alcoholic that we make for the kids. Um, that's the kind of place that we are. Um, this current design um, ends here on the left side, um, which would be adjacent to the proposed park that the city would control. The goal there is to work with them, or at least hopefully give some input on our end to say, hey, this is what we've seen works we have it in Swanee. We have a playground 10, 10 feet off of our patio right now. Um, we host kids' birthday parties. We've had little league award ceremonies. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what the age is. Johnny down the street is up at the brewery. Mommy, daddy, can I please go to the brewery to see Johnny? Yeah, twist my arm, no problem. Like, so um, I, I don't want people to feel like this is another bar because it's quite the opposite. Um, so with the city's proposed park there on, off to the left side, we feel like that could create another element, that indoor-outdoor feel, maybe a pet-friendly area, another playground like we have in Swanee. We want to host events. We want to do theme nights. We want to drive traffic to our location. That is our goal. That's our business model. Um, and, and in turn, we're going to drive traffic, hopefully, from outside of Smyrna and drive it to the other businesses surrounding us. The silos. There will not be six silos. Um, it, currently in Swanee, we uh, have one silo, which we purchased this year. We didn't have one when we started. Um, the reason for that was it's much more cost effective to buy grain in bulk. We do have to make the beer somehow. Um, the silo holds our grain, and we take it inside to make our beer when we're making a batch of beer. Um, the silos can range in sizes, heights, looks, feels. Um, currently in Swanee, we've branded it with our logos. Um, it's a great beacon of marketing for ourselves there. Um, but I've already spoken to Andrea and the city about some possibilities that if we were to put one or two silos there on site, what we could do. Hey, why don't we reach out to the art commission, maybe some local artists in the community? Why don't we do a really cool mural with the public's input? It's not going to be this eyesore that I think some people have in their heads about when you're driving down Atlanta Road. I want it to be actually what you want to see when you're driving down Atlanta Road, something you guys can be proud of as well. Um, and that's my goal there. there. There are some equipment items like a silo that we have to have, um, but it's not going to be the eyesore that I think some people may have in their heads. Aaron, can you describe the building itself a little bit with the, the three stories and what that looks like? Yeah, the, the proposed brewery right now is about 20,000 square feet. And before people freak out about the size of that, that's not the floor plan of the brewery. The floor plan of the brewery, the actual space it takes up on the ground, is going to be about 12,000 as it currently lays here. Um, the 20,000 comes from the fact that the front of house, the part where you guys will hopefully be able to enjoy, is going to be three levels. So 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, and then a back of house, that's 8,000. That's where that 20,000 number comes from. Um, the goal would be on the first floor to have your prototypical brewery atmosphere like you guys saw in the video um, at the very beginning of how we have it in Swanee. The second floor we are proposing is more of an event space, maybe a little higher end feel for corporate events, birthday parties. If you want to rent out an area to watch the Georgia Bulldogs, uh, hopefully win the national championship, you may be able to do that. Um, and then the third floor would be more of a rooftop. Um, so not enclosed, be open air, a place where you could, we're talking about maybe making that a 21 and up only area where, hey, I don't want to have to deal with 20,000 kids at the brewery. I can go to the rooftop and enjoy a, a nice conversation, more intimate feel up there on the rooftop. Um, so that's, that's the floor plan, the three levels, where that square footage comes from. The rest, that 8,000 back house is for our equipment and where we will be making uh, the beer. Anything else you want me to talk about? One, one of the things that struck me when the Suwannee representatives were here, they talked about, and, and you mentioned, when you um, 
built the facility or, or revamped that building that they had, that they had a public park next to it and they had plans yeah. to get rid of it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think it speaks to the type of... Yeah, the, the park that you guys saw in the video with the playground um, did not exist as it currently looks in that video when we first took over the property in Swanee. Um, it was a park. Um, it was an underused park. Um, I think it had a gazebo in it. It had an old playground. Um, and it sloped, there was no real activity there. It was in between a police station and the firehouse at the time. Um, there were plans before we ever moved in to actually revamp that park area into more of just a kind of flat surface gateway to another park that they're planning on building right now. Um, we opened up in October of 2019 and within the first month of being open, the playground that sat there that was very underused um, the city came to us and said that playground has seen more activity in the last month than it saw in 20 years combined. We heard so much feedback from the community, our patrons, other people, just kids that enjoyed going up to the park now because it activated that park. And we said, we need to keep that playground. It's the best part about the brewery. Um, to Swanee's credit, they went back and scrapped their entire plan to renovate that park. They came to us, asked for our input. We re renovated the playground, uh, refurbished it, or the city did. Um, they put in a turf grass area for cornhole and the kids to kick the balls around in. And now I, I seriously think it's the coolest feature about our brewery that anybody can go there. It's, it's a mini babysitter right there. The parents are able to hang out on the patio or walk into the park because they do have an open container ordinance there that they can go push their kid on the swing and enjoy their friends and don't feel like hey, I can't ever go do anything because I got the kids to take care of. No, the kids want to go there just as much as the parents do. Um, and the city of Swanee recognized that. They helped us out and their citizens by revamping that area. And now that playground is, again, one of the coolest things that we have there. Andrea, is there anything else that you can think of that we're missing before we move on to the... Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so the the plant... Thank you, Aaron. Um, thank you, guys. Aaron will be available for questions at that part of the meeting. The, the, Scott's going to talk in just a second about the land sale versus lease. And the, the plan would be to sell the almost acre to Steel Fire for $600,000. That was the number that we put in the um, letter of intent uh, as kind of a placeholder until we had an appraisal done because we had just bought five and a half acres right down the street at, by the Reed House at 600000 an acre. So we thought that was a pretty good um, we thought that was a pretty good place placeholder for it. What we'd like to do is use the proceeds from the land sale to help build the park adjacent, right? And that would include a, a, a um, playground, a, um, uh, a small stage where you could have some acoustic acts, but it would also have a, a backdrop as a screen so you could, you know, you could screen Braves games or University of Georgia football, Scott, or anything like that. Uh, and then it would have a pet friendly area up near Atlanta Road. So, so that that's kind of the. The, the loose plan, but will you, will you talk, Scott, about the um, land sale versus the lease, how we achieve the controls that we would, we would achieve with the sale and, and how that all works? Uh, yeah, I'll be happy to do that in spite of all these gratuitous University of Georgia comments. <laughs> so, uh, so one of the, um, I've been sitting here kind of daydreaming, thinking about this, and, and one of the problems, personal issues that I see in this is I'm going to have to acknowledge that I'm getting old. And the way, the reason I've got to do that is because to put this in context, I think you really need to consider how we did the rest of the Market Village, and I was uh, involved in that. Uh, and that was a long time ago, and that proves what I said earlier, that uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little older. But, but for the context of, of what we're looking at over on the site for the brewery, if you look at what we did right here in front of City Hall, you've got similar situations. You've got a, an area of property that's completely owned that was at the time completely owned by the city. A lot of people don't realize that, but where Atkins Park and Zuka and the uh, townhomes and all of the, the retail establishments and all, all the uh, private property out there was owned by the city when we first started this project. And City Hall was here. And so the idea was how do we have this, this, this private development right next to the city-owned property? And so we went through this concept and came out with a uh, with the way to make that work, and it won awards, right? 
And like Andrea said, though, that was 26 years ago. That, that was a long time ago. And like a lot of things, uh, you know, it's been very successful, but, but sometimes needs to kind of evolve with the times. And so that's kind of the idea here is, is what can we do on this other side that's similar to what we've already established here in the downtown Market Village. So that's kind of the general concept, the context that I see uh, for this. So we looked at this when we're looking at the site where the, where the Market Village, uh, I mean, where the uh, brewery site is, and it's a site that's owned by the public. It uh, is next to other public buildings. Um, our first idea, or we, we got, as we are talking about how do we do this, there was a big concern with, well, we wanna make sure that a, a project this visible, right, in the heart of the, of the downtown, that we have some control over it. So the idea is, well, how do we have control? Well, now we have zoning control already, right? And there's additional control, and Aaron mentioned this, within the downtown area, there's the Urban, Devi Urban Design Commission. That, those are additional guidelines that apply just to the downtown area. So we have control through zoning, you have control through the urban design uh, guidelines. Well, then their idea was well, we can get additional control if we continue to own the property, but we lease it to them. And so we met with the guys from Steel Fire, Fire and we talked about a lease and we made the case that, that uh, we wanted to lease this, or I wanted to look into the idea of a lease because that would give us this control going forward, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's, well, we didn't lease the, the other property, you know, in front of the Market Village area. And then, you know, Aaron and I, 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 I mean, we, we heard him. His point was, listen, we're, we're putting a $7 million investment into the downtown, right? And, and we had arguments, well, you know, there's a lot of properties more, more expensive than that that are, that are done on the ground lease model. And, and it was just a non-starter. It was that, that this is a small kind of family and friend-owned company. They were putting the biggest single investment in their downtown that anybody's ever put in. I mean, it's more than any of these buildings that have already been built. And um, and that they they just needed to own this. So then we, we thought, well, then if our reason that we wanted to look into the lease model was for us to control it, what could we do that would give us comparable controls with the sale? And so with that, we came up with this model. And again, this is very similar to what we did in the downtown market. The downtown market village, what we did was we, we put restrictive covenants on the property. We owned the property, the city owned the property, put restrictive covenants on the property, and then after that, we sold the property to the private development. So the idea over here, the similar model is we own the property and we deed restrict it, right? And so uh, Aaron and I, who's, he didn't tell you, but he's a lawyer also, smart enough not to practice, but he's a, he's a lawyer and, and, uh, and a good negotiator. But we, so we sat down uh, over you know, a few weeks and we, we ended up uh, coming up with, through, some types of, of uh, you know, give and take, we came up with deed restrictions. So the idea would be that, that in the deed from the uh, government to the private uh, sector, we would, we would have restrictions. So they wouldn't own it outright and be able to do anything they wanted with it. They would be deed restricted going forward. And so we thought that the deed restrictions on top of the regular zoning on top of the urban design districts gave us a lot of control over it. And the deed restrictions give us control if in the, un in the, you know, the unlikely event going forward that the zoning laws are changed to where something would be permitted there that nobody here today wants, it's still deed restricted, right? So, so we came up with that model and then it added to that this uh, right of first refusal. So I don't have any reason to think that these guys are gonna come in and immediately get out and sell it to somebody else. But if they did, the city or the, uh, the Downtown Development Authority would have the right to, to, to uh, basically to purchase it for this, you know, with collars, you know, uh, um, um, as to the price and how you establish that. No, we'd have the, have the ability to buy it. So, so we thought with that model, they, especially in the context of how we did the rest of the downtown, that we 
address this concern that we're trying to address through the ground lease model. So did that pretty much cover? No, I think so. I think, yeah. yeah that, um, I'm going to go over a couple of things uh, before we open it up for uh, comments and questions that just came out of the meeting that we had our work session, uh, I guess it was a week ago Thursday, where the city manager, Marty Allen from Swanee, came down and his assistant city manager, who was also uh, his economic development director, uh, Denise. That uh, has been something that the specific conversation to the brewery has been uh, put up on our, our website and our social media and distributed. There are copies uh, near the doors there of the transcript. And I did that because I really thought it was a, um, a lot of the questions and concerns that the public had had uh, were, were answered. A couple of the things I wanted to just mention, um, we talked about the silos already, that it's two, not six. Um, the, the truck traffic, a lot of people were concerned about, you know, 18 wheelers coming in here. It's, as Aaron said, it's, uh, probably about two box trucks a week, um, that that's not really what they're, that's not really their focus. Uh, odors and noise have been a big, um, a lot of questions around that. Um, there, there are not any odors, the, the noise, um, the noise, uh, questions. There were some issues with the music, I believe, that was played. Uh, from the facility there. Ha they have residential very close uh, adjacent just like we do uh, here across where Williams Park is and they made adjustments uh, to accommodate and make sure that, that, that they weren't um, annoying the neighbors with, with noise. Um, we A lot of discussion about why aren't they serving food? You're just going to have people coming to get drunk. And to, but the food truck model, we talked a lot about with the, with the Swanee officials about does that work? And they said they, it has been such a success in Swanee because you have a different food truck uh, every day of the week or five days a week or whatever it is and people are now calling to see which food truck it is coming because whether they drink or not they want to they want to come and, and be uh, there when that food truck is there and what I envision is with the new park and then the new green space where the roundabouts uh, currently you know people that whether they drink or not they're still going to be able to go in and have you know get some food and, uh, and enjoy their time outside. One of the things that came up is a lot of folks, oh, this is going to increase DUIs, it's going to increase crime. Um, they said that they had the same concerns. And a lot of these were concerns, uh, all of these that, that we had. Uh, Marty's quote was, Taco Bell has had more, more calls since Still Fire started than Still Fire has. They just haven't seen any increase in, in crime or DUIs at all. Uh, we asked, are they a good community partner? And they just went on and on about um, their partnership and that they have their foundation and the things that they do for the community and I'm sure you'll be asked and can maybe talk a little bit more about that. Um, we were asked, are they, is it locally owned or venture capitalists that are going to come in and then you know sell it? He spoke to that a little bit, but it's a it's a very small group of folks, family and friends that own this, uh, and he's uh, living here now. Um, why not another location? You know, Andrea talked about that that this is the location that they sought us out. We as a as a council as an elected body wanted to pursue that a little bit farther. Um, so that's why we're where we are. There is no other location on the table. This is it. This is what will be voted on when the time is right. Um, and you know, from my perspective, this is an economic development driver and, and will be a, hopefully a huge success. We talked about the architecture. It's been asked, are we giving these guys incentives? We, you know, we're giving them tax abatements and all that. No, we're not. We're not giving them any incentives uh, to, to come here um, because they're, they're uh, confident enough they're going to make um, have a successful business. Um, there's been questions about environmental study. Uh, there hasn't been an environmental study. How can you do this? Well, we have an environmental phase one study almost complete and it'll be available to the public, I think this week, Scott, if I'm not mistaken. But um, so that, that, is, that has been underway and is almost finished. Uh, the DDA meeting, that's the Downtown Development Authority, on, uh, met on Friday and they voted six to one to convey the land to Still Fire contingent on the um, the council's approval of the terms of the contract. And right now, there are, um, it, I'd say 99% of the land, even, maybe more, is in the DDA's control. There are two out parcels, two little slivers that are that are not. Um, and so when we vote on this, the, the way it would work is you'd, you'd convey those two slivers to the DDA and then they'd convey it to Still Fire if it went forward. Um, the proximity to the Baptist Church and to the school, we're, we're, that's been looked at every which way and we are within the legal, um, distance requirements for both. Um, the, most recently, the school uh, Smyrna Prep that exists in the building right there by the roundabout has, has come up. 
Um, I'll remind everybody, you know, Porchlight had a liquor license and they were right below them. Um, the bourbon and cigar bar is closer than the, than the um, brewery would be. Uh, concerns about the traffic study. You know, you did a traffic study uh, talking about uh, a 15,000 square foot commercial space. Well, as Aaron said, it's going to be 20,000, but 8,000 of that is going to be production. So you're actually talking about the, the, the actual retail space is going to be less. You know, it'll be 12, which is less than 15. So they, the, the, going back to the traffic study folks, um, they said that the, the impact, the 15,000 commercial space would actually be uh, more traffic than this will, than this will generate. Um, we talked about the uh, land um, sale. Scott, I'd like you to talk just a minute about the appraisal because, we, like I said, we went back and got an appraisal. Um, the, I think the, the range was somewhere 588 to 610, but talk, talk about how we got that appraiser and how they did that, please. Yeah, um, yeah we, we got an appraisal of the entire site knowing that we, were, we would determine which part of the site to convey if it moves forward. And so we got the entire site and uh, like you said, there's a range uh, and the bottom line, it was the, the midpoint between the, in the range was just under 600,000 per acre. And the appraiser was an MAI appraiser who does work, you know, I've, I've tried a jury trial with him as the expert witness before he's been qualified in court to do this. He's a good appraiser. Thank you. Um, the businesses downtown, uh, Atkins Park, the, all that I've, I've spoken with, which is almost all of them, everybody is in favor of this. They think it'll be a rising tide. They think more people will come to our downtown uh, and increase their business, one of which uh, sits on the Downtown Development Authority, Kevin Draw, and does some business, I guess, with Stout Brothers. Um, it was was overly excited about the possibility of these guys coming in. And then the one thing that the, the Swanee folks said that really resonated was most of their folks who may have been against this at the beginning but have seen how it's been now, um, the, the, the non-drinkers are some of their biggest supporters. And that really hit home with me that this, that, that the environment that they're trying to create is, is it has turned out to be exactly what they're, they're talking about. So the, hopefully going through that will, will answer some questions that y'all may have. I'd encourage you if you haven't, go to the, um, the city social media and find that link um, and or take a transcript with you and just and read it. Um, that's all I have. What I'd like to do, I think, for the comments and questions, since we have people in here and outside in the rooms and in the lobby, uh, we'll just ask you if you'd like to speak or ask a question, and Aaron and um, Andrea will be here to, to do that, and Scott, come up to either this mic up front or that mic uh, in the middle there and then uh, state your name, uh, your address, and then make your comments. We ask that you keep them to a minute or less. We've got so many folks here. Um, but we'll go ahead and begin that process now. So if you'd like to speak, come on up to either microphone. Um, and you can, y'all can just form a line. That'll allow folks who are outside to come in. Uh, and then if, if people are free to come and go as, as they like now. Right. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Daniel Deal. Um, I live in Smyrna. Uh, my wife works at the Keller Williams down the road. Uh, we actually live in the Vinings Forest community, right across from Taylor Bronner. Um, my daughter is a first grader at Teasley Elementary. I am a professional musician. I play piano and sing. Um, we do dueling pianos and solo piano gigs all around Atlanta. I don't really do, I wouldn't say I'm a local musician. All my work is around the area and the surrounding area. We do breweries, we do bars, we do restaurants, we do wedding events. You name it, we do it. Um, so uh, we actually have performed at Swanee, and we, we do pretty regularly. I've performed there maybe six times in the last year. Um, when I heard that the brewery is going to be coming here, I was ecstatic. I was excited just to see, because I know what kind of life it brings, um, what the brewery does to, like, it kind of is catalyst for all the businesses around it. I personally am a non-drinker. I don't drink alcohol. Um, and uh, I know Aaron mentioned they have the root beer, which is for the kids, but that's actually for me. Um, <laughs> I've had much of the root beer. It's awesome, not too sweet. Um, I am 100% for this. I'd love to see like the life come to the community. Um, I've seen the age range that it spans. Like I would bring my kid there, my wife there, my parents there. Uh, anybody here, I think, could enjoy it in some way or another. So that's Thank my you. two cents. Thank you for your comments. Yeah. We'll go to the back, uh, the middle microphone now. Go ahead and. Say your name and where you hey, live. Hey, Mayor Norton, PJ Protos. Also Is that live, on? Can everybody hear? 
Yeah, can let's, you hear let's me? Let's make sure that's on. It's on. Okay. PJ Protos, I also live in Smyrna, actually within walking distance of here. Uh, definitely for the brewery. However, I do have a couple of questions about the, the concept. You know, I've been to plenty of breweries here in Georgia, North Carolina, up in New England, where my wife is from. So my question is the concept of the three stories. Um, I, you know, most breweries have been to have been that community space where you want to get together. And it seems with, especially the 21 and up is what concerns me. Like you're intentionally trying to split the community up by having those multiple levels as opposed to having either one level or two. And the second thing is, you know, from a business standpoint, if you build it too big and you can't fill it, you know, it's tough on you guys to, to keep it running. Yeah, absolutely. Um, totally understand those concerns. Um, we have the same concerns, especially about the size and scope of the building. Um, I can tell you now that it's not going to be any bigger than that. And we've already had internal conversations and we're rethinking exactly how big do we want to make this, including do we need three stories? Maybe we need one with a rooftop. Um, to that exact point, the bigger it is, the more space we have to fill and the more likely chance that we don't succeed, right? Um, especially a private event space. You know, I got to have events going on all the time to justify that that area. Um, so we're looking at all those possibilities. Um, we thought it would be a good idea. The one thing we don't have in Swanee is a real discernible um, event space. We do have inquiries all the time. And unfortunately, because it is such a open one floor brewery that somebody wants to rent half the brewery on a Saturday, we're just not able to do it right now. So whether that's a second floor or we relook at it and do the floor plan in a different way to maybe be able to carve off some areas for private events, those are things we're looking at. And I, so I, I, I second that concern. Um, as far as the delineation of the ages, one of the f major feedbacks we get from our community there in Swanee is while there is a ton of family friendly atmosphere there, there are also people that want to get away from their kids when they come to the brewery and have a beer. And right now in Swanee, because it's all together, nobody's able to kind of split that or get away from that area. The rooftop, again, that's a proposal, something we have in our minds. Maybe we want to do it to where that rooftop is 21 and up only. It's not set in stone. And I would actually love to hear more from you guys about the thoughts about splitting that up. Um, have you been to a brewery that has a model that has a 21 and up? I figure if you have those 21s and up, around a bunch of kids and dogs, maybe they behave a little bit better as opposed to them being on their own. Yeah, we have no issue with the people that come without kids at the current brewery. It, again, it's an idea that we've had, do people want to see that? And, and we are flexible and we want to take opinions like this, honestly, and we're willing to work on that. And that's actually something that if we do it at first and we don't like it, it's very easily fixable. We just say, okay, this is not working. This is not giving us the effect that we want because it's really about the ambiance, the atmosphere, and that family-friendly atmosphere. And if all of a sudden it feels like it's a split and oh, you've got a bunch of drunks up on the first, second floor, I'll scrap that immediately because that is not our business model. That's not the atmosphere we're trying to create. Thank you. Okay, first microphone here. Hello. Uh, my name is Paula Vincent. I uh, live in Ward 4. And I represent uh, at least 30 neighbors. Uh, they're citizens of Smyrna. Yeah, and I join with those I Smyrna that. citizens and other neighbors um, to strongly oppose. This is a highly contentious proposed sale of the downtown Smyrna Village Green public land. This one acre land is part of the gateway to Smyrna, which impacts the image and the culture of our city. And I like beer. I have no problem with beer. I have no problem with you. I just don't like the location, I'm sorry. Um, no new beer factory should be built on the peaceful, sober land area where children, teens, families, elderly, church and school goers all play, reside, exercise, walk bikes, push baby carriages, participate in events and fairs. This is a location where all citizens enjoy connecting to build the community right now. Citizens have unaddressed concerns about the environmental impact on nearby homes and businesses. What level of continuous noise pollution, light pollution, rats, and other real, real issues are going to be caused by an open-air beer factory and operations, live music bands, DJs, bingo, and trivia, parties, big events, and food truck generators every single day? And what level of noise, rats, and lights are the city and nearby 86-plus homeowners and businesses willing to accept coming from this beer factory? Um, 
that uh, which is going to have 1,000 to 2,000 people a week in, in right there in that location. Um, is this something that the Smyrna citizens are willing to put up with? And we're almost um, at two minutes. I'm going to have to ask you to uh, wrap it up if you want okay. to Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, the beer factory can locate to an industrial zone elsewhere. Smyrna has already set the precedent by permitting the two other beer production factories in appropriate industrial zones away from this neighborhood area, away from where the library is, quiet areas, parks, where kids are, churches, things like that. Okay, ma'am, you're over two minutes. We're going to have to go on to the next one. Thank you so much. Yes, sir, in the back. My name is Mike Klosterman. I live in Ward 5. I am not against the brewery, but I'm just against the location. There are six establishments right now within a quarter of a mile that sell alcohol. And if you go a little bit farther, you get to Cretewood and some of the other establishments. So I think there's enough places to buy booze. Um, she mentioned the, uh, that's a pretty good picture for those who are against the brewery. That's a picture of what won the award here in Smyrna. And it, I've been here since 99, and it, it has a hometown feel to it. Like the major events, the art in the park, and uh, the 4th of July celebration that we do the first Saturday of August, you look at there's 50, 60,000 people there, you know? It has small town feel, even though it's in a big city. Um, I know you say it isn't a bar, but the gentleman claimed that 95% of the income comes from the patrons, and I'm sure the largest percentage is not root beer. Um, and right now there are, you, you haven't done a traffic study and you'd be removing, you're making whatever that street is flow on the, the west side of the distillery. Um, right now there is no traffic light at Village Green Circle. There's no traffic light at Power Spring, Powder Spring Street. That would have to be a light added. To one there of is these one places. coming at Powder Springs, yes sir. Okay, well, <clears throat> you've eliminated a, a lot of parking at the community center and I don't know, I'm, I'm a victim of Windy Hill, <laughs> I'll say it that way. Uh, we were told it'd be 30 months. It's been a year and a half at least, maybe two years, and now they're saying two to three more years to finish the project, okay? So I'm, I'm interested in the timing, that street that would have to go on the west side of the brewery um, and the park, you know, redoing the, the roundabout and all that. What's, what's, what would the sequent events that you would propose because... So we're almost, we're over two minutes again, so uh, if we can wrap it up, please. Okay, but right. finish one thing before you start another. Thank is you. what I'm saying. Y'all, please keep within the two minutes. In order to have everybody speak, we're, we really need y'all to be uh, respectful of the other people's time, please. The first um, microphone, please. Hi, my name is Barb McQuethy. I live in Ward 1. Um, I'm here in support of the brewery. I've been to several of these type of establishments through Georgia, as well as in other states. Um, I have always found them to be family friendly. Um, I've gone to some great events, especially the most recent event um, was pre-COVID, unfortunately. But it was a uh, benefit concert for Children's Healthcare of Atlanta for pediatric cancer research at Glover Park Brewery was very well attended. Um, speaking to your community events and trying to find space, they have that capability there with the two different floors where the, the I guess what you'd call the ground floor was closed off for the event that night, but yet it could still be open the outside area downstairs. People could flow back and forth, so there are ways to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The middle microphone in the back, please. Good afternoon, my name is Ryan Taylor. I'm a Ward 6 resident. I don't care about the brewery. I'm speaking only against the uh, premise that we can't have a ground lease for the property, right, that it has to be sold. So uh, the deed restrictions that were mentioned by the city attorney really are not the issue. We can restrict it as we need to, and I think the market will determine what's going to be on that property, whether it's successful or not. We have plenty of control there. My concern is the idea that we have Excuse some security. Me. Can you speak in the microphone? Because I can't hear you, and I really would like to hear what you're saying. Thank Certainly. you. Certainly. We have a microphone here for short people. <laughs> <laughs> Vertically challenged, sir. Well, whatever you want to call it, whatever's politically correct. I, I'm, I'm merely speaking against the idea that we cannot have a ground lease and be successful there. Uh, so there are a, a number of things that were uh, provided to us in the testimony here earlier that we would have deed restrictions, for example, that would give us protection about what the use of the property is. I don't think that's an issue. My concern is that this idea of a repurchase agreement, that we would buy the property back if we decided that we needed to use it, 
is false. And I've seen this fail in a number of, of situations. It's a unique property. It's next to our community center. It's the only one, the only location where we can expand our uses. Smyrna's uh, population is increasing. So our need for that property is increasing. Yet from day one, it would cost us $6.1 million to reacquire that property. That number is only gonna go up. And so this idea that a repurchase agreement is gonna protect us means we're probably gonna learn what churches and other groups learn that once you let this property go, you can't afford to buy it back when you intend to. So it's out of your control at that point. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello, my name is Montserrat Knowlton. I live in Ward 5 at Poplar Point, Smyrna. And the beer factory is not an issue about a business who wants to open shop in Smyrna. The apply process has been different. Even tonight, at every single meeting that I've been to, you, Mr. Mayor, have been selling more than the people from the, from the beer factory. This has been a redesigning of the entire downtown to place this beer factory in it. I am not opposed to a business like that, but this is the wrong location. It shouldn't be across from the community center. This is a special place for children to go learn uh, physical education and other things. Still fire location in, in um, Swanee might suit the needs of Swanee. They are a more rural area and um, they are a different kind of population. Their population of 20,000 is less selective and that the people in Smyrna. We, uh, every time that I attend one of these meetings, uh, Still Fire does not quite uh, talk about everything. Like tonight, he didn't talk about, it's not only a brewery, it's also a place where liquor is gonna be made and liquor is gonna be sold on the top floor. Well, they you, have not talked about that. If you'd, if you'd like to address that, Aaron. Uh. We only make beer in the brewery in Swanee. Um, a lot of breweries around Metro Atlanta, it is a trend that they are adding a distillery component. Um, the reason for that being is that there are a lot of people that wish to enjoy the brewery that don't like beer. Um, so a lot of these other breweries are providing another option. We have looked into it, it is not final. If we did decide or wanted to decide, we would have to get a license and it would have to be approved by the city. Um, if we did provide that, we would have to make it on site. We would do mixed cocktails at a controllable alcohol limit to control serving sizes. Again, as an option to customers and residents that don't like beer but still wish to engage and be at the brewery. Thank you. Um. Okay. This has not been quite explained at other meetings that way, but you know it is what it is. So if okay. that's what he's saying, that uh, they are not producing it in, in Swanee, I'll take it at such. Okay, yes, ma'am. Uh, you're, you're, you're over two minutes. Can you? I'm wrap sorry, up? I had to let him speak. Well, it was okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I am 71 years old. I live in Smyrna for 28 years. I love the town, I love the town. I don't have any relative here in this town. My relatives are either in Europe or they are up north in New England, okay? I stayed here after my retirement. I own a house in Florida, I'm not retiring I'm in Florida. I like Smyrna and I want the best for Smyrna. And this bre brewery is not the best for Smyrna, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Microphone in the back, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Priya Misra. Now let's have some respect of everybody in here, please. Let's have some decorum. Uh, if the gentleman, uh, sorry, you were interrupted, go ahead and start restart his. Yeah, time, all please. I all I said was my name. So. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, Mr. Mayor, I have lived in Smyrna since 1969, raised uh, three kids here, have seen a lot of changes. And uh, when I first uh, heard about the beer, you say eight months, I think it might have been nine or 10 months. Uh, 
I'm not particularly opposed to the uh, brewery, but my goodness, that location is beautiful. That location should not be a location for a brewery. And, and for some artful reason, none of you showed the damn parking lot. There's going to be a parking lot close to the brewery. Where the heck is it? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer. Okay, and we, that's, we, that's going to be an eyesore. Are you asking let, that question that you'd like Let me, or let or me finish okay. my comments, okay. then you can have the floor, sir. Okay. The, I was just trying to answer your question. That's please all. wait. The other thing is, I have seen studies. There's no one here from the clergy. There's no one here from the medical community. To bring children into a brewery and to think it's not going to lead to alcoholism among the young, that's asinine. <laughs> I mean, there have been so many studies in Europe, so many studies in the U.S. to show young children around any kind of alcohol lead to alcoholism. Yes. Now, where is a good place to put this brewery? Put it next to the Reed House. He just bought six acres. Right. Now, now, you know, you have, you have so much money coming in from splost, from taxes. The city is just overflowing with cash. Why don't you do something constructive with it? If the brewery goes in, in the present location, I can assure you, the elected officials of the city of Smyrna who support this brewery will not be coming back at the next election. Thank you for your comments. I will address the parking deck since he asked. Um, the parking deck was approved with SPLOS long before anybody knew anything about Still Fire. Um, that will go in the space between the, that's already been approved, the space between the church and the police station. Um, so that, that's the answer there. And then you mentioned that there's nobody here from the clergy. I see my pastor sitting in here. I know the, I think I saw Pastor Pennington, whether he's in this room or not, but I don't know whether you want to address at some point uh, some of those comments. Uh, please get in line and, and come up here. And I'm sure I mean, they might let you in line early. Did you want to say something? Mayor. Um, we actually have church service on Sundays at the brewery in Swanee, the uh, Phoenix community of Atlanta. <laughs> that they, they lease out, they don't lease out, they are given the space every Sunday morning. It's a non-denominational church. They come every Sunday morning, they set up, they have their church service. And then we come in, they hang out, they have their coffee, and then they leave. And it's such a great relationship. It's a Phoenix community of Atlanta. If you want to ask somebody from the church side of things, ask them how our relationship is and how we can contribute to that community as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, microphone one, please. So, um, Mayor, when you get a chance. Hi, I am Laura something. Feaster, and this is my husband, Cody Feaster. We moved to Smyrna earlier this year. So we are new residents, but that doesn't mean we love Smyrna any less. We saw so much potential in this city, and we moved from this heart of Atlanta, and we didn't want to move to the burbs. We didn't want to move out where there wasn't things to do, and, but we just fell in love with Smyrna. We fell in love with the downtown, and we walk here. To speak on the walkability, we walk here from our home. I go to Run Club on Mondays. I would love to be able to walk to a brewery, walk home, bring my nieces and nephews with me, bring my dog, who is basically my child, and... <laughs> I just see so much potential, and that's what our friends see, too, that are our age. We're in our late 20s. They come here, and they're like, wow, this city has potential. This city can become so much more than it is, and I see that happening through a brewery and other businesses that can come to Village, the market, and I'm just really excited for this, and I think it'll be great for our town. Thank you. Microphone in the middle, please. Hi there, uh, Johnny Rayner, Ward 7. Um, as a father of two young children and a churchgoer, uh, I just wanted to say that I'm fully in support of the proposed brewery. Uh, anytime that we go to visit our friends, we grew up in Woodstock and it's unrecognizable downtown. Before it was just the Ace Hardware, the Morgan's Ace Hardware and a dentist shop and that was pretty much it. And it's completely boomed since then. Uh, you see thousands of people out there every weekend. It's a wonderful place with parks and spread out, and it's just a great place to bring your family and hang out and fellowship. 
Um, so I just wanted to say that I really am in support of this because I think it's a beautiful thing to come to downtown Smyrna uh, because it's a great place for my two daughters to have a place to run. And, you know, no offense to the rundown train playground over there, but something new would be amazing um, to have them just go around, run and be nuts. So thank you. Thank you. This microphone, please. Uh, Cody Feaster, uh, also down the street with my wife, obviously. Um, I just wanted to say we've talked a lot about community. Um, and one thing we've noticed from moving here is the downtown, in my mind, should be the center of community. But I don't feel currently that there's a place that's a central hub for me to go meet neighbors and friends and bring pets to. There are smaller places, but there's not a, a central place for me to go have a big event with the whole neighborhood or, or my entire street. Uh, I think the brewery brings that for us. I think it gives us that central community. And I think if we look past the fact that it's called a brewery, it's a community center. It's a, it's a revitalized community center that we should have um, for people to, to go and hang out and bring their kids and pets. Uh, so I'm 100% for it. Thank you for your comment. You. Yes, sir, in the middle microphone, please. Is that me? Yes, sir. Cool, I'm Mark McAfee. I live on the Nickel Street with my wife uh, around the corner here. Uh, moved here, uh, my wife and I, 10 years ago with no kids, and now we have two of them that we walk down to the library every week. Um, speaking of the changes that have happened, we couldn't afford to live where we do uh, anymore because it's changed so much. Um, I'm not a big beer guy. I was actually hoping for the distillery to get me to some Georgia games because all my friends are always in the beer breweries all the time, so uh, I'm actually sorry to hear that's not happening. Um, my thing is I came here kind of on the fence because I heard, man, selling public parkland to do a brewery doesn't seem cool but let's hear him out and see how it goes. And seeing the presentation, it, it makes sense because, I mean, God, I came from Kennesaw and their downtown is kind of getting up there better, Woodstock's improving. And when we moved here to Smyrna, it was pretty sleepy. Um, you know, like a, a cable operation is one of the storefronts. And that's why when looking at the example of the downtown as, hey, look how we did this, it's, it was private, we, or it's now private, that seems like a little bit less of a selling point because it seems like, I don't know if the rent's too high or whatever, but it's been pretty sleepy, and we've been trying to walk down here with friends and family for years, and it's like, okay, you got a couple restaurants, and that's it. So that, I guess my thing is for those of us in the middle that hopefully aren't going to get clapped by either side, because it seems like it makes sense, <laughs> three stories seems like a bit of a stretch, um, because I, I think we need the space. If Kennesaw has two, we should at least have one. Um, but hearing the boosterism from elected officials and such, is there anything you can tell us um, what did you not give them? Was there anything that you fought them on? I don't know if it's confidential or whatever, <laughs> but maybe it'll make people feel better that are just like, hey, this seems like a good idea, but maybe this, because th I think there were good p points made about not selling the land. Is there something that they wanted and you said, no, 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 we need to not do that because it sounds like they're getting everything in the world. Yeah. Uh, Scott, you want to you address, I, I mean, I can't think of anything that they asked for that uh, I, I don't know. Sure. Um, you know, uh, this is public property going on the tax digest, so we, we didn't give them tax incentives, you know, and we didn't structure it in such a way that it would stay off the tax digest. So that's a financial uh, issue. They, uh, there was talk at one point about um, other concessions and that, that uh, we sometimes give uh, people that come in with new development. Uh, Smyrna Grove, we gave it, and, and as far as building permits and that. At one point, we had talked about that and that and we've kind of renegotiated that so there that's not happening either so there are, and, and all those are financial things but there are some financial things that were asked for that weren't given you know and also the the price the original price that when they came in the uh the price for the property that they initially proposed was not what the agreement is it's a lot less so yeah i think you guys did a great job thanks all right, this first microphone. Hi, um, my name is Mark Ogilvie. I'm a 21-year Smyrna resident and also a business owner. And I have to consider both needs as a resident and a business owner. I want the Market Village to thrive, and I'm open to ideas to get it to expand, to grow. Uh, my business has a stake in it as well as uh, my personal time. But I'm also a user of the community center, and... Um, uh, the uh, parcel of land fronting our community center is in effect a land trust. That land belongs more to our children than it does to us. As Smyrna grows, 
So grows the need for meeting space at our community center for clubs, civic groups, town hall gatherings, individual sports, fitness training, as well as team sports. At times, we're already maxing out the parking spaces and event space. Uh, when I had to weigh the, the needs of my private life and my personal life, my vote had to come down on the side of the potential for expansion of the community center. We need that land. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. The middle microphone, please. Go John. ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, my name is Dave Lincoln, 2860 Parkwood Road. Uh, I'd like to just read something quickly. Uh, it may be familiar to many of you. We need supporters of the brewery to come to Town Hall Sunday. It starts at 2 p.m. at the City Hall, and we are asking supporters to be there at 1.30 to pack the room with support. We'll have green yes signs. Can we count on you to be there and help us across the finish line? The council needs to hear support. If you reply, Derek Norton will also be able to call you and see, uh, see info like your active status and when uh, your message has been read. Now, I think the mayor, I thought that was a nonpartisan position. And what I guess a lot of us have not realized is that we elected a, a lobbyist for Still Fire Brewery. I mean, how did that happen? So now, now we have an inside job. What we have here is an inside job by a professional lobbyist to get Stillfire into a prime spot. They love it. They're going to take over. It's the kind of thing where in Swanee, they're not in the public space. They're outside of that. Here, shame on them to come in, push their way into our public park space, cause this divisive issue when there's plenty of great locations that they can be right here in Smyrna. They do not need to be in our public park space, period. Thank you very much. Since you directed your comments at me, I am going to take a minute to respond. Um, I am elected to do what I think is best for the city of Smyrna and put forward ideas that I think is best for the city. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here because I think it will be such an economic driver. I think it will be such a benefit to our community. And, and I recognize what you read because I wrote it. And I think that a lot of times when there's folks who are against something, it's, it's, they're always louder than the folks who are, are, are supportive. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to come and express their support that, that I, I've been saying for weeks, I believe, and I've heard from folks that this is, this is a widely supported effort, right? Uh, please, please I, I've given you all respect. Please give me respect as well, okay? Um, and so it's, I wanted folks to come here that, that and know about this meeting who support this. And I think it's, it's clear uh, today by the outpouring of, of folks who have come but on both sides, but everybody's involved, and, that, and I did do that. And, I, and I'm, I'm, it's no different from other councilmen, you know, Mr. Welsh uh, trying to postpone the vote, and, and it's, it's no different than anybody else. And, and to accuse me of, of some kind of inside job, um, I didn't meet these guys until, um, until Andrea brought them to us. In fact, we had a kind of a funny conversation, Aaron and I, uh, I've seen online and been accused, hey, these are my college buddies from Georgia, and he quickly pointed out that he was 20 years after me. I didn't really like that very much, but, uh, but uh, so, so to, to question integrity or the, or the reasoning behind what we're trying to do, I do think this is a good idea, and I am going to push for it because I think it's best for our city. That's what I was elected to do. Thank you. Okay. We, Micro microphone one, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Richard Patchett, 2667 Brown Circle, 47-year resident of Smyrna. Um, there's a question at the end of this, by the way. Um, first of all, I'm amazed that all of these, now compared to me, young, and I know they're very astute and very environment, environmental people, want to put a playground next to a four-lane highway that's not the best air to breathe for let alone children, and let alone even any of the rest of us. It's, 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 it's not environmental at all. Now, in ordinances, I don't think the city has mentioned, because there's seven ordinances, and I'm assuming some of them apply to this brewery, one of them does, that there are seven different ordinances for establishments like theirs, and they're all different distances, depending on what the city says, what they feel, what they want, whether they own the, proper, whether they own the land or they don't own their land. And by the way, that church was there 50 years before the city owned any of that land but 
So Ordinance 7 reduces that. The city does not say that there are different ordinances. They care more about some children than other children, some churches than other churches, some parts than others, some libraries than others, because the distances are all different. There's seven different ones recently. So I'd, I'd wonder whether, you know, in anything that uh, the church is less than 50 yards away, property line the property line from this thing. The park, less than 200 yards. The community center, where thousands of children come through on a yearly basis, less than 100 yards. A voting poll, less than 100 yards. And I know it might be door to door, but Ordinance 7, first of all, when was it added to the ordinances that reduced the distance to a church or a park from three and 200 to two and 100. When was it added? And how do, do you measure that? I'm sure it's door to door, but it depends where you put the door. The brewery can have a door on one side, but it's only got the delivery thing on the other side. Okay. So that's, that's about, and by the way, I don't deny the success. It will be successful, I'm sure. It will be monetarily and economically. I don't think it's the right place at all. Scott, you wanna address the ordinance and the distance? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but I, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll kind of explain. Does ordinance apply to this? Any ordinance apply to this brewery? Yeah, there's state laws apply to this and city ordinances apply to this. They both deal with regulation of alcohol. Does one preclude the other distance. or one override the other as far as state and city? Well, let me try to make a stab okay. and then how about you follow up because right. I'll lose my train of thought otherwise. So, so yeah, there, there's, there's, there's two sets of, of rules. The state has its set of rules and the locals have their set of rules. Okay, generally speaking, the state yields to the city for sales of alcohol to be consumed on premises, right? And so that's how you get to situations like uh, the mayor mentioned earlier, where under the same roof you had a uh, licensee selling alcohol, porch light, and above that a church under the same roof. Under the same roof, you also had a, uh, a licensee selling alcohol and a daycare, right? So, so those were allowed because those dealt with alcohol to be consumed on the premises and the state basically yields to the, to the local government for those types of sales, right? And so within this, so that's the, that's the, the state. The, the, the big issue is, is alcohol to be consumed on premises. The city has um, its set of ordinances that are different, and this, is, this is, is very common among governments that have mixed use areas, right? So the rules are different in mixed use areas uh, and areas within the downtown, and have been for years, than they are in the city at large. And that is because the zoning of the mixed use areas is you're trying to get multi-uses under one building. You've got, are in one development. And that's why you've got places like Belmont, which is zoned mixed use. You've got uh, places with licenses and you've got a school there and, and, and you've got residences and, and, and all that, that sort of thing. So the city has, has, um, has updated its alcohol ordinances frequently based on new businesses coming into the market village. We did it for first for the wine store here. When the wine store came in, they wouldn't have been allowed under our ordinances. We sat down with everybody and we, we, we worked it so that they could go in there. It's been a big, big success. We did the same thing for the growler store. There's another, uh, there, there, so, so we have gradually upgraded our ordinances that we could that the state didn't preempt us on in order to accommodate uh, new businesses in, in the area. So that, that, that's what we've done. Now, in this situation, would we have to or not? It depends on ultimately what, they, what it is they try to do, and it's early on that yet, but there, they, there's a chance that we would just like we've done it for some of the other businesses. So when, so <laughs> when was Ordinance 7 put in? And you're also saying then that you care, the city cares about some schools and children and some churches more than others because it's a different ordinance I, from, I don't know from ordinance one through seven. Seven. Yeah. seven is the last one that was put in and seven we'll says- We'll track down ordinance seven, the timing for you and, and get that answer yeah, back to you. I don't have what the seven is, I, I, but I, I know the most recent ordinance revision for the market- But it was revised probably after the city required all this land. Well, the ordinance seven didn't in exist because you know, prior to that, I know that. That's 30 years ago. The 26 party. years ago, she said. But, it's, but no, it was in 1990 is, is I, I did a lot of that. So time is up um, and courtesy is not. Your time is up. Well, that's true.
Curtis. I'm still asking the question. I haven't got the answer from my question. We will find Curtis that answer. He exists. We will find that answer for you about when and that. What I asked, I did ask, what is, you know, on the ordinance, you, you know, it says distance. So that church, which I said precluded by 50 years, any of the city property, is 50 yards away, property line to property line. I don't think it's measured like that. How do you measure that to require to fall, whether the ordinance is 100 yards, 200, or 3 or 100 yards, how do you measure that? In the downtown, we've got ordinances that, that designate how you measure. In the downtown area, you measure from the front door of the licensed establishment to crosswalks. And that makes sense. If you have to cross roads or if there's obstacles, you, go, you measure around the obstacles, uh, across the crosswalk. It's not as a crow flies. Right. It's, 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 uh, it's so the it has two most doors. normal legal route of pedestrian travel. So if there's two doors and one door is on the back side to bring in the trucks and the hops and all that to brew it, that door doesn't count. Only the door on the other side it's counts. It's the main door. Well, it's just the main door. I mean, the way I said, I mean, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the ordinance. You can, the ordinance doesn't say that. In yeah, it does. It yeah, the ordinance, yeah. Of, I mean, you know more than I do, but it doesn't say, ordinance seven doesn't say anything. Ordinance one through okay. seven doesn't. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you. Listen, we're going to get, we're going to move on to designated. our next speaker. And, and right. I, you know. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the middle microphone, please. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Evan Sturgis. I uh, live in Ward 3. Uh, Travis, thanks for all your hard work. Uh, my wife and I and son have been in Smyrna for a little over four years now. Um, you know, I'd like to start off by saying, you know, I, I think all of our elected officials, I don't think anybody's lobbying for still fire, but perhaps a better community and, um, you know, a better Smyrna. Uh, so we are definitely here in support of the brewery um, or the beer factory, whatever that is. <laughs> but, um, you know, w we see this as a, a a, a real sense of community and, and something that Smyrna's lacking. They've been lacking for a long time. And uh, I, you know, I think Smyrna's at a point where they're at a crossroad and it's, it's time to adapt or, or die. And all the other uh, communities around us, Roswell, Alpharetta, Woodstock, uh, everybody's moving forward uh, and they're focusing a lot of this on sense of community gathering and the people that live here. So uh, we are definitely in support of it. and. Uh, I think that everybody can work together to find common ground on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Don McWethy, my old neighbor. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, I'm Don McWethy. I live in Ward 1. My wife spoke a little bit ago. Um, I'm a big supporter of it. The mayor, I'm a big supporter of I, you. You did nothing wrong. I think you, you are right. You're a booster for the city. You're not nonpartisan. You don't care what happens. You're a booster for the city. And I am a huge supporter of this. I would like to see the third floor just because I like to be up on a roof. It can be all ages. I don't care. But I like the rooftop dynamic. <laughs> uh, um, calling it a beer factory doesn't change anything. And, and it's not accurate either. I have a question about the, the people calling it parkland. Since nothing, it, was, it seems that it was set aside for some future use. <laughs> Is it actually legally parkland? Every, every, and Scott, you were around when this was done. Uh, with you were with the city when this was done. Uh, every rendering that I've seen, and, and there are some examples here, have some structure, some retail, some. There was one that even had it as the uh, site for the police station, but something was was it's planned been on planned that. Planned for some sort some, of development. Some structure, yes. It is not taking a park away. It was a site planned for development. That's so, that's that's correct. And I think this is an excellent development. Thank you. So y'all, we are um, we are at three forty-seven. I'm I'm good to go until four, um, and then we'll we'll have to shut down uh, unless uh, I, I think we can't go much longer than that. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to speak but wanted to, please send your comments in, uh, email us. Uh, please come. The, the, the vote will be announced um, shortly. Uh, it'll be in the next several weeks. Um, so we'll, we'll go till 4 o'clock, which is another uh, 12, 13 minutes, and then, uh, then we'll close her down. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Kyle Cook. Uh, my wife, Jessica, and I live within walking distance here of uh, the Market Village. We moved here back in 2016. Um, the Brave Stadium wasn't built yet. 
uh, the Publix John Quill shopping center there was a abandoned construction site. Um, a lot of changes has happened. I think everybody can agree all those are good changes. Um, I think one of the things that the Smyrna Market Village here is lacking is there's not an anchor tenant there. There's not one big establishment that you can say, oh yeah, you know where so-and-so is. That's it. I think that Still Fire Brewery is the perfect anchor tenant for this, and we look forward to having them here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Tanya. I live in uh, Ward 5, Susan's Ward, and I've lived here in Cobb County since 85, in Smyrna, because I wanted to, since 2005, and I moved closer to, uh, closer to the downtown area because I love it. So the brewery concept has been a, an issue for me. Um, I, I applaud you for the work you've done today. I, I, I'm not so worried about the silos anymore. And the, the uh, one acre is for the brewery. The 4.8 is for the city. I love that. Uh, I'm not thrilled about the brewery as a, as a community center. Um, it's hard for me to hear about it as an anchor. So I'm wondering if you all would speak a little bit about what we may do with the rest of the 4.8 acres to, uh, to be more of the community center that so, some of so us are I talking about. So I think the numbers are, the, it's an acre uh, would be still fire and then 0.4 acre is oh. the other part of that. So, so what that's planned to be is the city park that so it'd be adjacent to all that we're doing where the current roundabout is um so that that's that's the it, it'll become a public park and gathering space there okay i'm just hoping that we can as a community work more on on a community center feel expand the community center thank you for your time thank you yes sir okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pierre Penda. You can pick up that microphone oh. so you don't have to bend down. Yeah, I, I live right behind the building on Bank Street here. So it appears to me that um, some people who are against uh, this project would rather see that space vacant. So have you received any better ideas from anybody? So that's my first question. And my second question is, if approved, when will construction begin and end? I've had that question before. Um, they came to us, I believe, in March or April, um, and then folks have said along the way, "Well, how, you know, is there any? Has there been any other interest?" There, there have been a couple of soft inquiries, but nothing, no concrete proposals, no um, nothing like that to speak of. Um, and Aaron, you can probably answer the question about uh, construction better than I can. Depends when it gets approved. No, um, we, we would be able to break ground, hopefully, if, if things go according to plan um, in the spring of the new year. Um, with the way that supply chain and material costs are right now, um, we'd like to be conservative, and we would hope to open by the spring of 2023. Um, if things go much better than that, there's a possibility of next fall opening um, if things continue in a manner that uh, suits us. So, Thank you. Yes, ma'am, this first microphone here. Hey, my name is Donna El Kayam. I'm in Ward 5, and I'm a former school teacher and advocate for healthy food and community gardens and um, all things healthy. <laughs> and I'm just very concerned about having this brewery right next to where a lot of children are taking classes and the open carry means that people will be drinking around the kids coming and going into the center and around the children's library and then there's the preschool and um, it just seems very inappropriate so I just, I'm hoping that the location could be moved. Um, also, I don't know what the ingredients are in the beer and I know that like on responsibletechnology.org they talk about how GMOs cause over 60 illnesses. <laughs> Um, I think there's like three documentary films on that website, and I'm just curious about what the ingredients are in the beer and if the beer is um, non-GMO. Um, so the other thing is um, that I understand that, that they're asking for um, $4 million um, to build the, um, the parking deck, which will be 
where the parking lot is now for the community center. And I'm just saying that that money, our taxpayer money, um, could be spent for to help um, the homeless, and kids and youth, um, nutritional education, community gardens, climate change, COVID recovery. Um, it seems like those are the higher priority things more than, um, you know, it's great to have fun and socialize and, you know, if people want to drink, that's fine, but it just seems like our taxpayer money could go to something that is more a uh, higher priority. And, um, you know, because I'm a homeless advocate, I see the people just asking for, you know, one to five dollars just so they can have lunch and they're not even getting that kind of help. And then this big corporation comes and asks for a five million dollar handout and Thank it you. doesn't, doesn't we're, seem we're a, fair. We're over two minutes. Uh, would you like to answer the I'm question? I'm done. And I appreciate all that you do for the community with our homeless population. Uh, you want to uh, talk about the ingredients of the beer? The ingredients of the beer. Uh, I think that was be the question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, beer can be made GMO-free, and, and we use non-GMO ingredients. There's only four ingredients in beer. It's water, grain, yeast, and hops. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's the same way all beer is made. Um, so if the GMO is a concern, um, I would like to put that to rest. Yeah. So there's only four ingredients in your beer? That's correct. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Carl Joyner. Uh, I don't have a yes sign or no sign. Um, I've talked to a lot of people that's for it and against it. And uh, the one, and I came in kind of late with this thing. Uh, the one question that came up is how did this property, a public property, become available? without it being advertised for sale if, if the city wanted to sell it. So the, an the answer to that is they, and Andrew, you can speak to this, they, they found us, we didn't find them. So, so they, they came and we, as we do with any proposal for public land, this body, this elected body met in executive session and we decided collectively that we would move forward with a letter of intent. That's how it came to be. And yes, I, they approached us. Uh, well, that's fine. That's but okay, so they approached it, and, and if it became a, a, an idea, say, okay, we can we can sell this property and bring in a new business. They they step forward. Let's see if we can bring in someone else to bid from this property. I, right now, for, we don't have any other inquiries yeah, or I've interest in the property. I've never seen a for sale sign or for lease never sign heard. on that property. Never. I've never seen it advertised. It happened pretty quick, and that's and that's and I'm not, you know, I'm yeah. gonna buy, hey, I'm gonna buy beer whether it's here or not. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have my beer. Yeah, so, no, I would just say that the reason this proposal is is in, is in front of the council is exactly that. We had a proposal, and the proposal has been brought to council, and now being brought to the public, and that's the well, proposal was, that's being voted on. I don't know on. if it was brought to the public first. That's I think what we're it doing just, right now. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, how many months? I'm not. I don't want to. Well, I'm, I'm not you know, want to debate yes or no. You know what I'm saying. I'm I not, do, but I'm, I do want people <clears throat> to be clear on how the process had worked. The process is, it they came to me and they said, "Do you think the city would be interested in in selling this property for this use?" And I said, "I really have no idea. I have to ask the people in charge." Uh, we asked those people in charge, and their their interest was there is enough interest to have a letter of intent so that we can work through this over the. The coming months on an actual contract, we can come talk to the public, get the public's input on the process, and then at some point it will go back to council, and council will actually vote yes or no. That has not occurred yet, so I want to be clear on that. So you're you're in charge. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not at you. But so you're in charge of the development. Okay. So if it became available, why don't you say, okay, somebody came to me. Let's see what other interests we can get. What other you know? What else can we do with this? Because I've spent a lot of time in the community center. Inside and outside looking for parking. I mean, I've driven around for minutes and minutes trying to find a place to park. But, uh, I mean, that was overflow parking. So I don't, and I thought that's what that was intended for. But since it became available for purchase, why wasn't it available for others? You know, why didn't you just put it out there and advertise just it maybe for two months? Maybe if this is, uh, it's not a proposal that moves forward. Maybe that's something the elected body yeah, wants to just, do. But at this yeah. point, it was a proposal made to us, and they are going to react one way or another to the proposal. Yeah, I just, it's just, something didn't, doesn't seem right. And that's all I'm saying. That's yeah. from what I'm hearing from both sides. So. Okay. 
Like I said, I'm going to buy beer whether they're here or not. So. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This first microphone. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Jeff Meadows, Ward 3. Uh, somebody used the word sleepy a while back, and I would like to say more like a sleep. Uh, we, we moved here 15 years ago, built our house because of the dynamic uh, city that it is, was. We want to see this project go through. We appreciate all your work, and I'm for it 100%. Thank you, sir. Scott, it doesn't look like there's anybody behind you. We'll have you as our last comment, and then uh, we'll close the meeting. Um, I want to thank, uh, we live on Bank Street, so um, I want to thank Still Fire for investing millions into our community. Um, I think it's huge what they're doing, and I, everybody's talking about this oceanfront property at the corner of Powder Springs and Atlanta Road, and I'm confused about it because really all it does is Bunch of bouncy houses sit there during the John Cole Festival. My kids don't play in it. I don't see many kids playing there. So the fact that they're actually doing something with the property, I think everybody should be very thankful for that. And to answer the question about the school, um, I know the lady that owns the school here in the village, it won't be there by the time Stillfire arrives, actually are moving the school to the other side of uh, Smyrna. And it has nothing to do with Stillfire. It's actually because they're expanding. So I wanted to put that myth to rest and um thanks still fire for what they're doing i think it's gonna be huge for our community i said that scott was gonna be the last speaker but then i see my pastor behind him and if he wants to speak i'm gonna let him and i was not gonna speak um but when the clergy part was brought up here i am and there are other clergy in the room clergy that i have a tremendous amount of just, uh, respect for that we don't feel the same on this um i've got church members up here on the board uh, that disagree on this, but that I still hold a tremendous amount of respect for. I've got church members all around me in the room that disagree that I hold a tremendous amount of respect for uh, in all sides. I want to talk about this just for a second on why I support it. I'm in the sales business, and I need every opportunity I can get to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Steel Fire Brewery is a third place. It is a third place where there are generations, especially young generations, who will not step doors in my church. They will not step door in my second campus, even though it is a missional campus and doesn't hold the high steeple. I look forward to doing Bible studies at Still Fire. <laughs> I look forward to hopefully holding a worship service over there. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is a place that's going to be coming into our downtown, which, by the way, is one of where my, camp one of where my campuses are located. It's actually on the first picture that we looked at today. Um, this is an opportunity and going to be a place that we can use uh, to better our community, to reach people for Christ, which is why I'm here. I know that's not for everybody, but it's why I support it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor. There are, uh, that, that will conclude the, the public portion. There are some council members, I understand, who would like to make comments. I just ask, we're at 4 o'clock. I'd ask everybody to keep their comments brief. Respect for uh, everybody that's here. I, I will be very quick, and I want to address one of the persons that, that talked about what, what did we get in return or how much did we give up. Uh, and, and I guess I, it's, all of you probably know I, I am not supportive of, of the brewery simply because of the location. Um, that's w one reason. Number two is uh, the, the city spending all of the money that we get from the brewery to, to build a, a park, so to speak, for the, for the citizens, when really I feel like it's for the brewery. But one of the things that we can, we can get in return is it, the, the appraisal for this property was $863,000. Six hundred is that portion of the property that Still House wants to move on to. If we want to get something in return, let's sell them the whole property and let them build the park instead of us taking the money that we get from them and us building the park. Let them do it instead of us. So uh, that's my comment for the day. Mr. Pickens, anything? Mr. Wagner? Mr. Lindley? Ms. Wilkinson? 
Yes, I would like to say that I've had my um, request for questions up for a long time. I don't have a screen up. I'm oh, okay. I, I, All right. Here's Thank my, you. Yeah, my, my okay. Mind. So uh, my, one of my questions uh, I would like to ask, maybe Scott Cochran could weigh in on it, is the um, possibility of the distillery, because I heard Mr. Beegis mention that uh, it would be something that uh, Smyrna would have to approve the license of, and I know I've asked before, and my understanding was that would they would be able to do the distillery if it was approved by the state. And I didn't, um, uh, from my understanding, it wasn't something that was going to come back to us. Um, so if you could address that for people here, because I think, you know, some of them were asking that question. And then I have another comment. Thank you. Sure. They, they would have to come back before us for all the licenses that they need including a license for a distillery if they choose to, to do that. Okay, thank you. And um, the other comment that I would like to make, because I've heard this said several times, that it came, and it, to me it, it, it's a little bit uh, misleading because um, it wasn't, uh, it didn't come to us, to the council, as an idea until um, it was really late May, and I believe there were a lot. There was a lot of work that was being done on this um, without uh, the count, without it coming to the council. I don't know if other council members were aware of it, but I think there was a lot of work done, um, you know, by the staff and um, and. You know, before, I think my understanding is maybe even back from February, so it didn't really come to us till late May. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Mr. Gould. Dr. Wheaton. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Really appreciate your time on a Sunday. This will be recorded and distributed and available. Um, really, really appreciate y'all's input. Thank you so much. We're adjourned.